Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute since I sat down to film a video. I may or may not have gone MIA this last quarter. It kind of just picked me up and threw me around in circles until I got car sick and threw up and then it picked me up again and just it was a really hectic quarter. But this video is my kind of at this point annual let's talk about UCSC video. I think I've kind of strayed away from talking about negatives or things I'm kind of mad about at UCSC, but today's the day where it's all coming out. It's a huge school with a lot of different opinions, so you might disagree with me completely, you might agree with me, I don't really know. This is just my opinions, these are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear more about your thoughts in the comments. Without further ado, let's get started. Something that's really important to know, I think, especially if you're interested in engineering or computer science, is that Santa Cruz's computer science department is impacted. What that means is if you don't apply for computer science, you are not allowed to be a computer science major. I don't know anyone who has gotten a like request to change majors be allowed to do this. So obviously on one perspective, that means that if you're interested in computer science, you should apply computer science because there's not really a chance for you to change your mind later. On one end of that, you know, you could assume that if it's impacted, they're probably capping it at a certain amount and it might be harder major to get into. I think it's really frustrating in the way that a lot of times people will change their majors before they find what they really like at school. And you know, maybe your first year or second year, you might find computer science and you won't really be allowed to major in it, which is kind of like limiting your opportunities. How enrollment works is there's two passes of enrollment. There's first pass, which goes seniors go first, then comes juniors, then comes sophomores, then comes freshmen. And then once everyone's gone a chance, then once again in second pass, it goes seniors, sophomores, freshmen. And how enrollment works for CS classes is during that first pass, no matter your standing, if you're not a declared CS major, you will not be able to take a majority of CS classes. And then by the second pass, those classes are full. And so non-CS majors who are CS minors, game design or CE are gonna have to waitlist those classes, which has made it really hard. I've been like lucky to get a CS class whenever I do, even though I'm a senior standing, a sophomore CS student might have a better chance of getting those classes. I still have gone to take a lot of classes. A lot of times you can talk to professors and get enrollment codes. It just is a little bit of something that comes up in the enrollment process. I could probably count on one hand the amount of classes I've taken that have been under a hundred people. Almost all my classes have been quite large, I haven't really had an issue with it if I'm being honest. I kind of enjoy my large classes because you're bound to find someone or the other that you can talk to in the class or be able to like work together with. But I know a lot of people that is an adjustment to make from high school when you're having 20 to 30 people in your classes to suddenly over 100. I think it can be daunting, but a lot of times if you want more of a community feel, you can go to section or you can make go to like MSI tutor groups and that way you're able to also find a smaller group within the bigger groups. It's also one of those things where like it can be harder to create one-on-one -on -one relations with your professors because your classes are so big so you have to put that extra effort. Like they're not gonna recognize your name unless you're super active in the chat or always like raising your hand if it's in person. Unless you do something like that, there's a high chance they're not gonna remember you unless you go to their office hours and really try to form that connection. Something I wish I did is take some CC classes before coming to college. Honestly, your summer after high school or just at some point, I really recommend taking CC classes. You can use assist.org to figure out how to transfer things. I just think that having some classes, first of all, it makes you have an earlier enrollment time because the more units you have, the faster your standing goes and the higher your standing, the earlier your enrollment is. And also you can get, like kind of get a better idea of what you're interested in. I also think that CC classes are so much easier to get classes out of the way than AP classes. I went to a kind of small high school, so we didn't have that many AP classes in the first place. The, out of the AP classes I took, I think only two end up being relevant for UCSC. You literally don't lose because I don't even think it goes into your UC GPA. It just like gives you extra units and it's kind of fun. But I wouldn't recommend taking lower division major requirements because I think those are best to take at UCSC because that way if the curriculum on underlies or like relates to your future classes, you gotta get the same cohesive feel. Santa Cruz is not a party school, let me tell you. I always forget that I used to think this until I talk to someone and they mention this and I'm like, where are you getting that from? And I remember that it's such a big stereotype, but it's literally not true, at least in my experience. Greek life is there, but it's quite limited. It's not like crazy frats on campus. They're not even allowed to be on campus. Overall, I would say it's a very laid back and relaxed type of social scene where there's a lot of kickbacks and a lot of smaller group type things. Like there's definitely always something to do. I think the craziest parties I saw were forest raves, which were and like a danger here and there, but nothing really crazy. This next one, I'm honestly a little scared. I've avoided talking about this because when I do talk about things like this, I tend to get some intriguing comments, but I think it's something like, important to bring up. I think Santa Cruz gets the impression of being really tons of protest, activism, things like that on campus. Though I think a lot of students hold a lot of strong beliefs, our admin doesn't, and our admin is a lot of times will say something and do something different behind doors. And there's been a lot of things that come up with their admin. You can feel free to look into that yourself. I think something that put things 
in a lot of perspective for me was our TA protest last year where TAs were kind of protesting for living wages. The way our admin reacted to that and just that whole situation is something that kind of made me realize that at the end of the day it's an institution as activism based as they might seem and as warm and welcoming as they try to be they are at the end of the day just trying to take your money and any school is going to be like that and I can't really say what's better or worse. That's just something that I think during the protest I was like wow Okay, something I definitely thought I remember the summer before coming to college is that this school is on the beach. I'm gonna be at the boardwalk every single week and it's gonna be great. And I definitely don't think that's true. I remember thinking I should get a boardwalk pass because I was gonna be there so often. And I think I went to the boardwalk a total of two times for the boardwalk frolic every year. I'm a bit of a homebody, so that is something to consider. And I did live on campus. I think when you live off campus, you get to go to the beach and really see Santa Cruz a lot more. But our actual campus is very isolated from the city. This was Santa Cruz city and then this was the beach there's this hill over here and then there's campus in the middle of the forest so it's literally not like right on the beach it's not like I can walk to the beach unless I choose when I live off campus to live close to the beach and then I would just like drive or take the bus up to campus it's like a pro and a con like yeah you're not on the beach however Santa Cruz City can be a little sketchy at times and so being able to be on campus you feel really safe and also it's such a pretty campus like I am not an outdoorsy person before coming to campus I'm literally a homebody like I said but the campus is absolutely Absolutely beautiful like when else are you gonna live to the forest but also be 10 minutes away from the beach and like a little town something big that definitely came up when I was applying that I was like what does this mean is Santa Cruz is laid back I know a lot of other schools you have to do like rounds of interviews to join orgs and people might not always be down to study with you I think the biggest thing I would say is like you're pushed to explore things outside your academics. No one's really gonna judge you for your academics or your GPA, but they're also not gonna judge you for how you dress or how you look. Coming from the Bay Area, I was kind of used to seeing a certain amount of competitiveness type of thing, and I haven't really had that strong of an experience with that in college. I think there'll definitely always be a community that likes to do that, and it's normally in STEM where people get really pretentious. That's definitely still there, I'm not gonna lie and say it isn't. I know for some people it's kind of hard to find a drive. No one really talks about how good our dining hall food is. I know on the Reddit you'll see people complaining about it and I complained about it a lot my freshman year until I talked to people who went to other schools and I realized how lucky we were. We don't have a lot of fast food in the area. In general, Santa Cruz tries to focus on local, which is fine with me. As long as I have Taco Bell, which we have two of, I was happy. We have five dining halls and they all would offer different things. Obviously with COVID, this might be different. They still like, unless you're having the oven roasted chicken thighs, the food was pretty good. It's just about making sure to check the menus before you go. Something a little bit more relevant to right now with Zoom and hybrid classes, I would say my best experience with online classes has been with the psych department. They've been super understanding. Most of my classes have been with them and I've had pretty good experiences. My worst experience has been with the applied mathematics department. I took an AMS class and it was my only class where I had to use ProctorU. And then I took CS classes and it's been hit or miss depending on the professors. Some have been great and some have been okay. Zoom classes and hybrid classes, I recommend looking on Rate My Professor, specifically at reviews that were made during the pandemic because that kind of shows how the professors adjusted to online classes and how their class format has changed. I think looking on Rate My Professor is so important and can make or break your experience. Sometimes that can mess with your graduation plan so I recommend talking to an advisor and seeing what makes the most sense but I think having an academic plan and being able to look through it is really important it can literally make you graduate early on accident another thing is office hours can change your college experience I was really scared of office hours for literally so long I still am office hours scared especially with professor office hours but I've gotten a lot better and I think Going to office hours, it's like a whole smaller community learning the same classes. It's just a very intimate setting. And so you can get a better relation with professors or with TAs and students in your class. Just something really great. And I think that applies to any school. I think next thing is another one that just applies no matter where you go. You're not gonna be the same person you are walking into college as you are leaving. There's so much that's gonna happen socially, academically, mentally. You're gonna go through a lot. And sometimes it can be really draining balancing emotional stuff with academic stuff. And I know this is something I talked about with someone who I DM who goes to Santa Cruz who's a freshman now I won't say their name but if they're watching this hi you definitely made me remember this but I remember freshman year it was honestly draining just balancing academic stuff with you know living on my own as well as like friendships and relationships things are gonna happen there's no like advice of like go to this person or go to this thing I can tell you if you ever do want some extra support from outside your community and outside your friends Santa Cruz does have caps which I'll put some more information about down below I've went before and I think you get five free sessions per and 
annual year so like calendar year and i had a really good experience so i would push you that if you're interested to go to that another thing that i kind of heard a lot but i didn't know what it meant is that we are a research-based school so there is a lot of research opportunities and i think one thing that's exciting about santa cruz is since it's not super competitive it is viable for an undergraduate student to get involved in research i know i got involved in research at the spring quarter of my sophomore year it changed my college experience completely i read something a while ago that were like two things that could completely change your college experience is having a relationship with a professor like actually getting to know them and talk to them and then two working on something that goes beyond one quarter just something that you know is not about a grade and research was the place where i got to do that being involved in research i've worked with an amazing professor who's like taught me so much as well as got to work on so many exciting projects i've loved it i think the issue with research is it can be discouraging it's kind of like internship searching where it's really hard to kind of find things and i think specifically in santa cruz there is opportunities but it's hard to find professors and they're not going to come looking for you you have to put that effort in i think the best thing for you to do to figure out where you want to do research or what to do in research is search up the department that you might be interested in and then look through professors and maybe try to go to their office hours or book appointments with them to talk and then from there see because emailing can kind of be a flop but if you guys want me to talk more about this i can definitely do a whole video about research and get like more people's perspectives besides my own well but just let me know if that's even wanted something i didn't realize because i lived on campus until i talked to other people is how freaking expensive santa cruz is being brutally honest i'm just gonna put the numbers out there i paid 1200 for a triple my freshman year it pains me to say this and then i paid around i think the same 1200 for a small double my sophomore year you can also look through my videos to get a better idea but those rooms were small they were so small and they were very expensive that was on campus housing though on campus housing is one hard to get and two really small also COVID has changed that a little bit but it pains me that I dropped that much on rent off campus a single will cost you over a thousand double I think will be around 850 to 900 it really depends on location do you want to be close to campus or do you want to spend like 30 minutes busing to campus unless you have a car something to factor into cost your financial aid like when deciding the city is expensive excuse any change in angle or how i look my camera died next thing i want to say is getting an internship and that whole process i've been to a fair share of internship or like career fairs i do think that they were nice experiences and they really opened my eyes but i think if you're not in a very set path it can be kind of hard to give you guys an idea for me i'm personally a coxi student interested in pursuing a career in hci and ux and ui which though we do have an hci path of our coxi major i feel like the actual opportunities in hci are kind of limited i've yet to go to a career fair that has had ux opportunities they've been mainly software engineering or business there's not really that in between it's only through my research lab and being involved in my school org that i was able to find ux and ui i feel bad complaining because in the end i did end up finding it but it was a little bit of a harder search especially my freshman and sophomore year and the last thing i have to share your campus affiliation doesn't matter that much but it also doesn't matter at all it's kind of hard to go outside of your campus affiliation to meet people i was a kresge affiliate and life in kresge was a lot quieter and slower that being said i ended up making a ton of friends and see nine and ten just through classes and just mutual friends and things and it was fine and i literally made a whole group of friends there and i have friends from all around campus now but like for example i don't really know that many cowl people because cowl's all the way on the other side of campus and i just didn't really go that often and so i didn't really get that involved there but it doesn't matter that much if you don't like your college you can easily live off campus your second year i think it's relevant in the way that like stevenson for example has two classes for their core class versus kresge had one and so i'd have to plan my classes accordingly to take two classes versus one but it's only your freshman year and as long as you know that going into it it doesn't matter that much i don't really know what to say besides like it's not a life-changing decision if you don't get the college you want it's just something you plan for accordingly i think that's the best way i can say it and also go outside your comfort zone try to meet people from other colleges whether it's through discord because things are online or if it's through instagram dms or if it's in person being able to like go to events i literally have no idea what to expect because ucsc has not told us much i don't know i remember being like super like oh my god what college should i pick and in the end it didn't really matter that is everything that i could think of there will probably be more things that come up so be sure to tell me what you think if you're a student who's currently at UCSC be sure to share some things that you would like other people to know down below or if you're coming or recently got accepted be sure to comment down below so I can congratulate you because that is so exciting and I cannot wait to see all the things y'all do and I'll see you very soon in another one bye